Hello and welcome to our presentation. So I am Attila, I am working for Juice, and this is going to be our joint presentation together with Stefan from Salamoni, the creators of ARE. Um, hopefully, many of you have attended Stefan's earlier talk about a general introduction to ARE. This one is going to be a very practical talk focusing on how to create ARE plugins using Juice. Um, we will be looking at the concrete plugin uh, API that you can be using from Juice. Um, everything you are about to see now is now using the official Juice 7 features. Uh, some of you may be aware, though, that Ceremony and Soundradix had a Juice ARA fork for quite some time, and they have given this to us to use as the basis for the official integration. So before I would get into the technical details, and for the benefit of those who missed the earlier talk, I will ask Stefan now to give us a general introduction into ARA. So, um, yeah, thanks for um, integrating ARA into Juice. Um, it was a pleasure uh, being in this project. I've shown this slide earlier today, but I see that there's quite a few new faces. So what is ARA all about? Let's just have a really quick recap. ARA is an <clears throat> acronym for Audio Random Access. It's an open source uh, C API um, that you can download at this link. And the idea of making ARA was that uh, in a plugin just like Melodyne, you have um, the freedom to rearrange the original material in any way you like. You can cut a note at the end of the song, play it back at the start of the song, and if the plugin now wants to render the start of the song, it needs to access data that is uh, actually originally present at the end of the song, which is kind of not reachable with the traditional APIs. So we've designed ARA as an extension to these APIs. We had a traditional real-time input signal is being replaced with a model of what's going to be played, and the plugin can access the model, and it all, uh, moreover, it can access the musical abstractions about this model, such as, for example, the tempo map that the song is going to be playing with, or the chords that the audio uh, material originally uh, was played following. Uh, and also it can perform intensive analysis of tempo or chords and report this back to the host. So it works actually in both ways. And there's a lot <coughs> of integration features and especially these integration features are going to be shown in action uh, as part of our presentation here. So um, let's just see how to hook it up and what it can do for you. Thank you. So. After that, let's take a look at what kind of new features uh, are now part of the Choose uh, toolbox. So ARA support has been added to the producer and CMake as well. If you open the producer and create a new plugin project, you will find this new plugin template called ARA. It's very similar to the basic plugin template, but it has a few extra checkboxes uh, related to ARA features. You also have the option to create ARA plugins from CMake. Uh, once again, this will look almost exactly like uh, a basic audio plugin project. An ARA plugin project is also going to be an audio unit or a VST3 plugin project, but it has access to another set of API. So in case of CMake, you need to use the isARA effect uh, true parameter in the choose add plugin command. Now, uh, we have also added support to the audio plugin host, so you can quickly try out your ARA plugins. If the audio plugin host is built with ARA support and the plugin is instantiated in ARA mode, then right-clicking on the plugin instance, you will show this Show ARA Host Controls uh, option, and you will have uh, the option to drop an audio file um, on these host controls. These are very simple controls, but they are actually exercising a lot of ARA-related code paths. So they have the potential to trigger lots of ARA assertions that are part of the ARA SDK. This is a good way to start out with plugin development, but before releasing, of course, you would have to test it in a fully-fledged DO, but that is no different to releasing a basic uh, audio plugin. Um, the features necessary for hosting ERA plugins are also available as public classes. So using these, you can build your own ERA hosting features as well. Um, the ERA SDK does not ship with the Juice framework, so you need to download it separately, and then you have to configure the producer and CMake to use it. 
So uh, acquiring the SDK is as simple as using a git clone command. Uh, it's important that you use the recursive option, and you also have to specify the ARA SDK version, which is right now 2.2.0. This is on our develop branch. Uh, if you are using the latest stable branch, it's 2.1.0, but you will find that information in the Juice documentation. Once you have downloaded this, you can configure this path in the producer. You go into preferences, global paths, and there is now an extra field saying ARA SDK. This configuration also has to be made in CMake, if that's what you are using. You can use either the juice set ARA SDK path command. This is something that you would put into your CMake list TXT file uh, after you have included the juice library, or you can use the juice global ARA SDK path. This is a, a CMake variable, so you can put it into the cache or pass it to CMake as a command line argument. It's enough to use one of these uh, options. And once you are done with that, uh, you will be able to build the ARA plugin demo. You can do it from the producer uh, examples, or if you have configured CMake to build the juice examples, and you have also configured the ARA SDK path, then this target will become available to you. And I'm going to ask Stefan now to demonstrate us some of the features that are only possible through ARA with the demo. So um, <clears throat> let me start showing this in Studio One. What we have here now is a small song, which is using the wrong audio device. There we go. Um, and now to add AOA, um, what I do in Studio One is that uh, you insert this as an event effect, and event is what in the ARA API uh, would be called the playback region. So down here, let's add our um, our demo plugin. And as you can see, uh, ARA is about the arrangement, but it only shows these parts of the arrangement where the plugin is inserted. So in order to bring up this other guitar, we need to add the demo here as well. And now what you realize is that the view actually shows both tracks. So it's not um, linked to any of the objects in the arrange. It's a view of the entire document. And now you can go ahead and like move your regions or um, edit the content uh, for navigation. You can rename. Oops. Uh, you can change colors. Uh, and everything is being picked up. Reorder your tracks. This is all being reflected, and it's actually important to test these features in the different hosts because uh, this really helps navigating more complex plugin UIs. Uh, up here, you can see the playback uh, context. And again, if I make edits here, like you know, changing the chords, um, you can see how it immediately is reflected in the plugin. And the plugin can make a lot of use of this information. And um, you can same, see the same for Tempo Map. We really made the plugin demo so that uh, specifically host developers can really see what they are communicating to the plugin or getting back. And, but also for plugin developers, it's useful to see how does this uh, implementation perform uh, compared to the code that I've been writing. Um, what does our plugin actually do? It has some very basic signal processing. It just dims uh, the, it's very soft now, just dims it by about 12 dB, which is really sufficient to show the editing process with ARA. So if I uh, go ahead and duplicate this region, uh, by default, Studio One is creating an alias. So I mean, if I toggle dim now, you see that it actually toggles for both. But there's a command uh, for the audio events, new clip version, and now this copies this, the edit state, the audio modification state in ARA terms um, to, uh, to be a distinct entity, and now it can toggle each um, content independently. And you may have noticed already this uh, yellow triangle that comes up. This is our editor rendering implementation in the demo plugin. That's, can you bring up the volume a bit? 
so that's actually audible. So here's um, it just plays a loop around the cursor position while I'm holding down the mouse. And you can see, because of, uh, it's using the ARA editor rendering technique, if I'm using it on a different track, then I'll have the volume settings of that other track, and it's also reflecting the dim state in the preview. So this is really nifty to check your, that your states are actually being also stored and restored properly. And now, uh, another thing that I want to show, I'm going to show in Reaper. Reaper has this default behavior where if you are bringing the application to the background, it actually releases the audio files and it stops access. And this is also something that can be uh, picked up uh, through the ARA API. And you can see how the plugin reflects the state of Reaper. And if I bring Reaper back, then the audio display will return. Uh, and I'm also going to really briefly show the selection features that we have in the ARA API. So there's a time selection here that's going to be shown down here in the plugin. I can select um, playback regions or uh, tracks. And this is also very, very useful for navigation. You're going to have features like zoom to selection or only show selected tracks in order to help people navigate your complex plugin UIs. So this is a great way to test it out. And um, uh, with the earlier talk, somebody asked about playback control. So we added this to the um, plugin as well. If you double click here, it starts playback. And uh, you can reposition. And you can even set the cycle that you want to host uh, to use through the ARA IPs. Uh, you actually just hear the, heard a dropout. This is a, um, showing where this is just a demo and not the real thing. Uh, I talked about the audio caching earlier. With the buffered audio source, default buffered audio source that is in the Juice SDK, uh, there's actually problems in Reaper uh, with timing sometimes. So if you want to make an actual product, you may need to go beyond what we have in the demo, but it's a demo. It shows a lot of things. It's very useful for development, and it's a great starting point for your own products. With that, Atina. So having seen some of the features, what can be done with ARI, um, we are going to take a look at the Choose ARA plugin API. We'll start with a traditional plugin and then build up from there, uh, taking a look at the additional ARA classes. So uh, every audio plugin um, has two very important classes, traditional audio plugins. Uh, one of them is the audio processor class. This is responsible for uh, the audio processing, parameter handling, and state persistence. Um, among other things, it has two important functions. The process block function, this is the real-time audio callback function, and the create editor function, which is responsible for creating the other important class, the audio processor editor. This is the graphical user interface of your audio plugin. And all this needs to have an entry point, and for the Juice framework, this entry point is the create plugin filter function. It's a freestanding function that your implementation needs to provide. So let's see what kind of additions uh, we have in ARA. Central to every ARA plugin is the document controller. And in Juice, you implement your own document controller by inheriting from ARA document controller specialization. You can see that this document controller encapsulates the ARA document. This is the main model object uh, that holds all the information shared by the host and the plugin. And a document controller can also provide useful functionality in and on itself to the DAW. Um, for example, uh, an ARD plugin can provide analysis features. Um, it can analyze, for example, what kinds of notes are being played back in an audio source, and then the implementation for that would live inside the document controller. There are no restrictions uh, regarding the lifetime of the document controller and the audio processor. It's possible that a DAW will only instantiate a document controller without the audio processor. Uh, and in this case, it can utilize the features um, without a processor uh, plugin callback even running. Because of this reason, we need another entry point. And we choose this is the create ARA factory function. Once again, this is a freestanding function returning an ARA factory object. You don't have to implement this ARA factory class yourself. That's why it's grayed out. There is a static helper function inside ARA document controller specialization. 
So uh, if you are using a producer template, this create array factory function is an auto-generated one-liner. And um, we talked about how we can provide analysis features to the DAW, but if you want to have an interactive audiovisual experience, which most uh, ARA plugins will provide, uh, we need more classes. These are the ARA playback renderer, editor renderer, and editor view classes. Um, just a few words about these. A playback renderer plays a role when you press the play button in your DAW. Uh, and in this case, the playback renderer is responsible for following the playhead of the DAW, acquiring the audio samples through the ARA interface, uh, doing any additional processing, maybe time stretching or pitch shifting, and then outputting these samples uh, on the audio processor's process block. I will say another word about that. The editor renderer is an interactive um, audio synthesis engine. So previously you have seen that uh, yellow selection where we can loop a selected part of the track again and again, and that is the editor renderer. Basically you can provide immediate feedback to the user even if the project is not being played back in the door. And the editor view is used to provide additional information about ARA that you can present in the audio processor editor. If you want to implement these, you have to inherit from the playback renderer and so on classes, and you also have to overload the do create playback renderer, do create editor renderer, and so on functions, uh, returning an instance of your own uh, plugin. The way these two sides are connected together is there are special helper functions that will actually call the playback renderer functionality from inside your plugin's process block and also from the audio processor editor. So this is the host plugin interface, the functions that the plugin is providing to the host, and we have seen already the do create playback renderer function. Uh, there are a lot more functions. For example, if your uh, document controller provides analysis capabilities, you would overload do get processing algorithm count or do request audio source content analysis. Uh, there are many functions like this, but most of them are optional, so you can build out your ARA plugins functionality gradually. And there is another set of customization points. This is an exhaustive list of all of the listener classes that the document controller specialization inherits from. If you inherit, uh, if you overload any functions uh, in these um, parent classes, you will be notified of all the edits that the DAW has made to the ARA document. You can, of course, inherit uh, from these listeners with your custom classes and attach your custom class object to one particular region, sequence, or audio source. So this is mirroring the typical listener pattern that you can see in Juice. And I will say a few more words about the other direction. So the host is also providing an interface with functions that the plugin can call. Um, however, I'm only, only showing an example because this interface is available in an object-oriented way through the classes that I have already mentioned. So, for example, to read the audio samples of an ARA audio source, what we need to do is wrap it into an ARA audio source reader, which is a Juice audio format reader class, and then we can call the read samples functions. So, uh, that's for the theoretical overview. And now I will show you a quick live coding example, and I will be doing the absolute minimum that you need to have a working ERA plugin. So I'm starting with the producer, and I'm selecting the ERA plugin template. I will just call our plugin ADC and save it on the desktop. Here you will see the plugin settings. Most of this is exactly the same that you have seen with traditional audio plugins. There are a few extra options. And the first of them is this plugin ARA analyzable content types. Now, if your document controller would provide analysis capability uh, to the host, this is where you could check, for example, notes. And this would advertise to the host that this plugin is capable of analyzing an audio source and identifying what kind of notes are being played back. Um, this is a difficult to implement feature. We will leave this checked out. Uh, the next one, plugin ARA transformation. 
uh, there are just a handful of transformations currently in the API, um, the most notable being time stretching. We have a plugin ARA factory ID. Uh, you may recall that every audio plugin has a unique identifier. Now I mentioned that a document controller can provide useful functionality in and on its own, and it can be instantiated separately, so it makes sense that it has its own ID. That is the plugin ARA document archive ID. Uh, this is uh, very similar as if you were versioning your parameters in your plugin saved state. Um, and basically, this way you can provide backward compatibility and ensure that if you have a new version um, of your plugin, then you can control how far back it can open old settings saved into uh, projects with the old version of your plugin. And finally, we have the plugin ARA compatible document archive IDs. And this is a list of all those archive IDs that this particular plugin can open. And the reason for having this feature is that it is possible for multiple ARA plugins to use the same uh, document archive format. They can open each other's document archives, or you can uh, think about having multiple editions of one plugin working with the same uh, document format. And these are, uh, so everything can be left on default. Um, Everything has sensible values, but if you were to release your plugin, you would definitely want to take control of the factory ID, the document archive ID, and these settings to ensure backward compatibility with old versions of your plugin and other plugins. I'm opening the project, and we will just take a quick look at the project structure. You will see that we have plugin processor header and CPP classes, plugin editor header and CPP classes. Uh, that's the typical for every audio plugin. We also now have a document controller uh, implementation and a playback renderer implementation. This is the minimum necessary feature uh, to have an ARA plugin. Uh, now I'm going to open the plugin processor, and you can see that it inherits from the Juice audio processor ARA extension. This is a new inheritance, and this is how an audio processor in ARA mode has access to additional ARA-related functions. Uh, the document controller is very simple. We don't need to make any changes here. At least you have to implement the do-create playback renderer function, uh, but we have a default implementation for that. And finally, we have a playback renderer, which uh, in about well, less than 100 lines can almost provide a complete uh, functionality. So finally, I'm going to show you how to connect the audio processor with the new ARA-related functionality. I will cheat because we don't have a lot of time. So the ARA part needs to be prepared. And in the prepare to play function, you need to call the ARA-related prepare to play functions. If I show you uh, the playback renderer implementation, you will see that it has a prepare to play and process block function. So a playback renderer is like an embedded audio processor inside your audio processor, but it's only live when uh, uh, this feature has been assigned uh, to our plugin. Um, connecting the process block function now. And uh, this is auto-generated code. And this is going to be a simple one-liner. Then I will create a helper class for all uh, the audio source readers. Uh, that goes into the playback renderer header file. And uh, in the playback renderers prepare to play function. We need to create readers. This is how we create readers for all playback regions. And uh, oh, of course we need we need an instance of that. And 
And finally, this is going in the process block function of the playback renderer. And this is the placeholder implementation replaced. So I will try to build this plugin now, which is uh, going to be a small miracle if it works. And you could see that we have made very few modifications. And I will open the audio plugin host. Thank you. Thank you. That, that saved a couple of minutes, definitely. Thank you. So I am scanning uh, for the plugins. And we have the ADC plugin. Now, if I show you, you can see that an ADC ARA plugin can be instantiated in ARA or ordinary mode. We will instantiate it in ordinary mode. I'm connecting the outputs of the plugin to the audio output. Open the host controls, and I finally add uh, an audio file. And there you have it, uh, audio playing back through an ARA plugin. Um, the one remarkable thing about this setup here is that you can see that the plugin instances inputs are not even connected. And that's because uh, the ERA plugin has random access to all of the source data shared uh, by the host. And uh, it's reading uh, ARA samples through the ARA API and uh, providing an output. So that's all the time we had. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I will just share a couple of references with you. I would recommend the official ERE documentation because it's much more than just function signatures. It has introductory sections and diagrams and explanations. Once you have a feel for the ERE library, you can check out the ERE plugin demo inside the Juice repository. It's uh, quite featureful. And finally, if you have any questions during development, I can recommend you the Juice forum, where a lot of active developers are helping each other. Uh, so with that, we thank you very much. Hi, uh, I'm very new to ARI, uh, just admitting that. Um, in the uh, normal audio processors process block, you appear to replace that with calls to the playback renderer. And in my brain, that's sort of the reverse of what I would want if I have a, like, how would that work when the plugin is not in ARI mode? Yes. How do you detect um, that? I will uh, try to answer that very quickly. So we are actually calling uh, the ARA-related process block function inside uh, the process block function, and it actually has a return value. And I could have written it like this. And uh, if the plugin is not in ARA mode, this value is going to be false, and you can have your fallback rendering code right after that line. Yeah, and you would need to implement that, right? You for the plugin to, to work in non-ARA mode. Right now, it's working correctly in ARA mode, and I only demoed it in ARA mode. But in non-ARA mode, it would be just silent. Um, yeah, so also um, very new to ARA. Uh, sorry if the question is um, not correct. But is it possible for an ARA plugin to sort of tell the DAW to bounce a certain track and then get access to that audio? Um, well, n not not this way, uh, because the bounce features in the host are there. Why would you want the plugin to do that? But what's actually possible, it's a feature we've not mentioned in the earlier talk either, ARA supports uh, embedding chunks into audio files. So um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with spectral layers. They've actually used this feature so that you can select what they call a layer and then just drag that to the host and it will generate an audio file and embed a file chunk that is then, when, when the host receives this and recognizes this file chunk, it's going to open the uh, ARA plugin and feed the chunk to the plugin. And then the plugin can suppress this exported data in the original 
plugin instance and uh, it's going to be added as a separate plugin instance. This is very fluent workflow and uh, it's not uh, fully supported in all the hosts yet, but we are working obviously on making this available in all the hosts because we believe that's an, a crucial workflow. Okay, so the, and the name is Audio Random Access. Um, can I also read and write MIDI regions or is that...? Uh, not at this point. Okay. Um, and also you cannot really write with a, it's, it's, it's just a read API conceptually. I mean, you can like export files that then are being read, but you can't like, you can't push any data into the host model directly. But, uh, and we haven't done MIDI yet because there was, um, in general, as we are designing ARA, we are only releasing features that are actually working in real life plugins and real life hosts with the actual API in between. And we didn't have a plugin at, up to now that actually um, did some use of uh, the MIDI data. So if you're considering doing something, we are open to extending this. But that's the reason why we don't have it yet. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. I'll stop hogging the microphone. Uh, just a follow-up from the previous question. So that is using ARA is is a return from our implementation or just just verifies that and returns false if you're not on uh, ARA mode? The process block for ARA function is part of the Juice framework, so you can always call it in an ARA-enabled audio processor, and it will take care of uh, calling a playback renderer if it exists, if it has been assigned. Okay. Thank you. One of the biggest challenges we ran into um, was that it seemed like uh, different DAWs implemented uh, ARA integration slightly differently. Uh, so we would get everything working like in Studio One, only to find some bugs in Logic. We might patch those bugs in Logic, <laughs> only to find <laughs> some issues with Studio logic One. Is, it happens. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, par for course. So um, I guess I was just wondering, has that been your experience? And or is it also possible that maybe we were just doing something weird? Um, well, uh, everything is possible. It's, um, the, complex, the core API is actually not that complex, right? It's, it's fairly straightforward. But it's been used in so many different contexts, with so many different threading scenarios, with so many ways of grouping the uh, plugin instances together and of assigning this to parts of and which runs, which plugin instances run in which threads. So it's really, really hard to get this working in the general space of ARA that is out there. That's uh, that's a known challenge. Uh, but yeah, there are some there are some hosts that are more prone to bugs than others. Let me put it this way. Andrew. So is all of the rendering of the processed audio handled by the host and you don't have to set up anything within your plugin to do it? Or how do you get the audio back out onto a track so you can disable it to use a different ARA process or something like that? Um, so it is the audio processor process block that will be called by the host. And basically that's where the sound is exiting the plugin. And that's where the function is forwarded to the internal ARA implementation. So whenever the host wants to produce sound uh, on a track, it will create an audio processor instance it has to create and will assign the ARA playback renderer role to it. Right, so it's up to the host to decide whether to just play it back or to render it back onto the originating track. Yeah, the host always has full control over the model structure and uh, yeah, as, as I said earlier, you can't push anything into the host. You can kind of use this workaround with the external file if you, if you want that. Uh, but yeah, there's no, no way to force the host from the plugin to perform any in bounce in place or anything. We felt that it wasn't really necessary because all the hosts have these features and it doesn't really make a difference whether you invoke this function through the host API or through the plugin API. And keeping these separated uh, allows the host to more focus, uh, to, to make a more streamlined experience for what they think is their best workflow in their context. And this actually really widely differs between the hosts, which kind of ties back to your question. 